Shall we sound the alarms? Is it time to sound the alarms? I don't know what that means with the Philadelphia Phillies. Because to me, it's like every game you play is an alarm, isn't it? But we, we, yeah, we're going to sound the alarm because they lost 2-3 to the Atlanta Braves. And I know people are freaked the freak out. Bill Calarulo and Ray Dunn, there are people all over the Delaware Valley. I've been seeing the tweets on social media. People are scared to death right now because they lost two or three of the Atlanta Braves. And I go, I'm not. I'm not. I'm really not. And I know people go, how could you not be? Well, uh, I'm not. I'm just not. I think the Phillies will be a one or two seed in Major League Baseball. I, I know that sounds like strange to people right now that uh, I'm not that concerned. Here's what I'm concerned about. There's a story in today's Athletic from Matt Gelb who has documented that teams playing the Phillies now have doubled down on their off-speed pitches since the break. So they see a lot of curves. They see a lot of, of uh, change-ups uh, and off-speed pitches that are somehow fluck, uh, flummoxing them. Um, I don't get that. See, I, I, if, if you are prepared to be a hitter and you are being coached on – what pitchers are going to throw you, there's no reason for you not to hit breaking stuff. It stands to reason if pitchers are throwing breaking stuff more than 50% of the time, you should be sitting on breaking stuff. And and, and if you're not sitting on breaking, because the breaking stuff, if you watched uh, Sh- Sh- Schwellenbach last night, all his breaking stuff was on the outside part of the plate to right-handed hitters, right? You did see that, right, Bill? Absolutely. Okay, uh, especially to Castellano, who's a sucker for that pitch, like nobody I've ever seen. Uh, so if 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 you if you're a hitter, that makes the job easier for you because that divides the plate. It's like okay, the the, the pitch is only going to come on one side of the plate, and you should be prepared to rake that pitch. This is what I don't understand about Phillies hitters. And if a guy throws you a front door breaking pitch, I salute. Uh, congratulations. All right, you got a strike on that. I wasn't looking for that. But you're not going to beat me on a pitch that's going to break on the outer half of the plate. And that's what the what Phillies hitters, I, I've seen them do. Uh, and that's why people are panicking. They are not hitting all at once. And Bryce Harper is not hitting. So when you're, you're – and Schwarber's not hitting. When, when your key guys aren't hitting uh, and, and the left-handed uh, batters are seeing uh, breaking stuff away from them also – uh, I, I don't understand that part of it. So this is, up, this is up to a hitter. It's not up to a batting coach. It's not up to a curveball machine. Because a curveball machine, all a curveball machine does for you as a hitter to prepare is you know exactly where the pitch is coming. It's not like live pitching. You're not seeing a ball out of a pitcher's hand, and you're not seeing whether he can change it up with a fastball or, or a front door breaking pitch. A curveball machine is only going to prepare you to hit the outside part of the bay, which you're not expecting on every pitch. So you got to be, if you're a professional hitter, it shouldn't be that difficult. Mike, I'm not hitting the panic button. Oh, yes, you are. Let, let me get oh, there. Oh, yes, you are. Let me get there. I'm not hitting the panic button because they lost two of three to Atlanta. I'm hitting the panic button because this has been going on now, dating all the way back to June. This team has not been a good baseball team in over two months. You look at their record since June 9th, they're well under 500. You look at them since the All-Star break, there's two teams that have a worse record than them. The Chicago White Sox, who are an historically bad baseball team, and the Seattle Mariners, who just fired their manager. So I'm hitting the panic button because when a team tries to show you who they are for long enough, you accept who they are. And this is not a good baseball team right now. That's why I'm hitting the panic button. I still think they're going to win the NL East because they took a, such a big lead, and they're still six up with only 35 to go. But this team doing something in October, my expectations are extremely low right now. And maybe I'm not going to get hurt because of it, but I just don't see this team as a good baseball team for the last two and a half months, Mike. That's why I'm hitting the panic button. Okay. But, but you're hitting that panic button, taking out of the equation that teams can cycle. Well, they got to right. get – when are they going to get out of this? Uh, well, there's a lot of baseball left. Now, wouldn't you rather have a team that uh, gets hot in September? Absolutely. Okay, th- these are, these are um, I don't know, what, what do you call them? Uh, nothing days. Even on talk radio. This is a, no- like, this is a nothing period of the, of the year. And for baseball players, August usually is. Like the, the, the part of August 
because you know, okay, these games. This is a long season. We we now understand it's a long season in August. Our biorhythms are a little bit off. September's when we really have to start to play. I think good teams know that, and I think good teams will respond to that. You could be right. Maybe maybe the, the Phillies team that we see now is the Phillies team that we're going to see, and we're going to be let down again. I don't believe that. I believe their lineup is too good for that. I believe they have too many good hitters in that lineup to, to have this kind of funk all the way through to the end. I don't see it. So you're just hoping they're going to be able to flip that switch and then all of a sudden become a good baseball team I don't think it's a again. flipping of a switch. It's just it's, it's knowing who you are as a team. They know they're a good team. We know they're a good team. We know they have a good lineup. They know they have a good lineup. They know they're good hitters. It's not flipping a switch. It's just getting back to norm. All right, you just said they know they're good hitters. Yeah. Well, let's go to the Matt Gelb article then. Uh-huh. Because since the All-Star break, 49% of their pitches have been non-fastballs. That would be the most in Major League Baseball history for an entire season since when they started tracking this only nine years ago. Yeah, I, But yet these, these, these batters who are supposed I, to be have, so good can't did, figure it out. Did you hear me blame them? I, in the first part of my soliloquy this morning, I blamed them. For not being able to hit, but I don't. I don't think that will continue. This is the difference between you and I, or or fans, or maybe even Ray. I don't know, Ray. Where do you stand on this? Right now, are you panicked? I'm not panicked, but I'll be honest with you. I, I'm really done sitting here, continuing to tell myself, "Hey, this team's great. This team's great. This team's great." I need them to start showing me this. I, I've gotten to a point of frustration with them where my expectation every night, I kind of have that feeling. Okay, this is where they dialed up. They turn it back. Last mm-hmm. night, I had the defeated feeling. And the defeated feeling is not something I've grown accustomed to with this group of guys. Do I think they could turn it up in October? Absolutely. I think the upside of this team still remains what we believe it was at the beginning of the season, what we believed it was when they were the best team in baseball. But right now, I've hit a frustration point where they get behind, and I don't have that feeling of, oh, yeah, this group's got it. This group's going to figure it out tonight. And that's a different feeling than I've had for most of this season. All right. I mean, listen, it's fair, and it's fair for people to to question them right now. I I just don't... I don't see this this malaise continuing uh, into September. I, I just don't. Now, now here, here's the difference. I mean, a, a, a hitter who knows he's a good hitter, then if, if he's not hitting, then has to surrender to preparation. And and Bill is right when you know what you're going to... Here's what, here's what Schwellenbach said. He said, I just tried to do what I did with the last time. Same scouting report. Harper and Schwarber in the lineup this time around. But watching the last couple of games, they struggle with curveballs. Later in the game, that's what I kind of leaned on. All right, well, okay, this is where preparation has to overtake your mental acuity that you're a good hitter. Because right now you're not a good hitter, and you're not surrendering to preparation. Preparation tells you you're going to get breaking pitches more than 50% of the time. So if there's a breaking pitch in the zone that's on the outside part of the plate, you should be raking that pitch. You should be raking it to right center field if you're a good hitter. If you're a left-handed hitter, you should be raking it to left center field. That's where I blame these kind of hitters. I think they're too in their head about, well, I'm a good hitter, instead of saying, well, let's prepare. I'm a good hitter plus preparation. In the series, Mike, and I know you've seen these numbers, Schwarber, Turner, and Harper combined for a batting average of 60 with 14 strikeouts. But it goes even deeper than that. Since the All Star break, Harper's batting 203, Trey's batting 211, JT's batting 232, Stott's batting 222, and Brandon Marsh, my God, is batting 167. I, can you even trust Marsh at this point? No, I, I can't. That's where you, I don't have an answer for Marsh. But I have an answer for the other guys. Do you think all those guys are that kind of hitters? Those numbers that you just put put out there, are they 203 hitters? I don't, but we've seen this story before. It happened last year in the NLCS when the bats went cold. Yeah. So this is why I'm hitting the panic button, man. Wow. I, I, listen, I, I don't panic when it comes to a baseball team. I just don't. I know they're a good team. I I know that they're they're going to hit. Uh, they're, they, they haven't turned into bad hitters. Uh, in a matter of, of four weeks. They, they just haven't. They just have hit a malaise, and now they've got to sharpen up their mental acuity. They've got to prepare that all these teams now are going to uh, kill them with breaking balls. Uh, that's got to be the preparation that takes over here instead of uh, you know telling themselves they're good hitters and they're going to come out of it. It's time for you to prepare to be a good hitter. Listen, that's all I'm saying. We'll get back to this in a second, which is negative, but I, I want to talk some positivity for a second. Mm-hmm. Ray, how about our man Mikey Miss calling the Adam Duvall home run yesterday? 
Did, and did he been, hit a home run last night? I, I don't act like you didn't, I didn't celebrate. I, I didn't even realize yeah. it. Did he hit one? Yeah, last yeah night? he did. Uh, I know. Yeah. We should have listened to him, right? Oh, we should have. And we also had a point out on the on the text line already. The uh, oh. first three over of two and a half, that, that also was yeah. in play. So oh, Hold on a second. You didn't play? You didn't play? The, oh, you emptied the bucket I on another I told you, I emptied bet. the bucket on the, the Harper home run. So I had nothing no, left. Bill, uh, I... You didn't play the Dua home run for like twenty dollars. I was an like, idiot what? and went dub dubs. I picked uh, two errors for dub dubs, but they didn't give him any. Did they give him any errors? Did last you night? really bet? Well, Russell Wilson would have two errors. No, nah, I bet. Oh, it. Okay. I bet him to hit a home run. See, this is the thing, right? He doesn't listen to me. Bill has like it doesn't matter what I say. Bill's not going to listen. Bill has like uh, uh, what do you have? The uh, uh, nom, nom, are you Nabil Don? Is that what they say with the hard hat? Who has the hard hat? Yeah, I'm, I'm Sigi. Oh, you're Sigi? What's the Italian that has the hard hat? Probably the Sicilians. No, no it's not the Sicilian. It's, no, maybe it's the... Yeah, I, it, it's something else. It's, actually, it's, I am... Uh, not where I'm from. I do have family from Naples as well. Yeah, I don't think it's Naples either. I think it's uh, Calabria.